Japan by the name of Kawagishi, discovered in around 1993. And I don't have the foggiest idea how he discovered this, but he discovered that this mushroom stimulates nerves to regrow. And he postulated it could be an effective treatment against Alzheimer's. Since we don't have anything for Alzheimer's and since this is non-toxic, we should test it. Mushrooms are completely unusual organisms, and they're ignored by so many people, and yet they're a vital interface between all forms of life. At the University of Southern Florida, a very interesting study came out. Mice were trained to have a conditioned fear response, and so when there's a sound that's associated with a pain, later on when they just heard the sound, they cowered in fear. When they treated the mice with psilocybin, the compound of magic mushrooms, the mice dissociated that link. The mice overcame the fear-conditioned response. We started with very low doses to as high doses, as one milligram per kilogram. Now, what was interesting, if you look at double-labeled cells, in other words, the birth of new neurons, we saw an increase in neurogenesis. Neurogenesis literally means neuro for nerves and genesis, a rebirth or beginning of the regrowing of neurons. They were not using the same neurological pathways you have in the past. This is really exciting because it means that the brain has a plasticity about it, is able to heal, is able to grow. It just needs the right compounds to help it develop new neurological pathways. We're all getting older. We all suffer some degree of dementia. What compounds can we take that enhances and preserves neurogenesis? I know many, many people who would not dare take a psilocybin mushroom trip. But the concept of them taking 1 50th of a dose, something like that, and it causes neurogenesis that might make them smarter or in a better mood or happier, that's a whole different subject. We are on a never-ending search for partners. 